Louisiana Beer Reviews, special edition Shiner Prickly Pear, summer seasonal, revisited. Now I reviewed this over eight years ago in 2015, Independent Crab Brewer, and I liked it. But then it went away for a long time, but if you look at the website now, it's saying, uh, <coughs> it's back due to the people demanding it, you know, begging for it to come back. It's got a new label, it's got this um, light green and bright pink and black and khaki. Beer brewed with prickly pear fruit from a prickly pear cactus. We used to have one of those in our yard when we lived on the north side of in, uh, US Highway 61. Now I'm on the south side of it. Um, well, I guess technically the east side of the, the west side of it. Um, But truly the north, the south side of it. This unique summer season offers a perfect relief from summer's intense heat. The fruit of the prickly pear, a cactus native to our brewery's landscape, not native to Louisiana, we just had one, blends wonderfully with citra and United States Goldings hops for a tart citrusy flavor and floral aroma that's unlike any other summer lager. It's a crisp and refreshing alternative to drinking from the hose. <laughs> Brussit, cheers. All right, uh, it comes in cans also. I bought this at Mathern's. It was a, like $1.79 for the single. Last time I had it, it was in the bottle version as well. We don't get too many Shiner varieties anymore. We used to get that family reunion pack with all the different uh, nice smoke, uh, nice water vapor. But that we mainly just get the Bach and some seasonals. I'm talking about this town, maybe more into New Orleans or other towns that get more variety. Um, kind of fizzes away like a flavored malt beverage, which is what it is. Heads, uh, thin head sticking around, no white head. The aroma. Get a subtle prickly pear fruit nose, but um, I think the main Aroma is just like standard lager. Now, is it an adjunct lager? Do they have like corn or rice? I don't know. They don't give the ingredients. It just gives a quick rundown. 4.9% alcohol, 20 bitterness units. And they show a can on the photo. That's why I know they have cans. Don't know about draft. You definitely get the fruit. Get a lot of tap water here. Truthfully, they do like a beta. I mean, Shiner is sort of like Texas's version of a beta. Well, really, a beta is Louisiana's version of Shiner because Shiner is a lot older company. But they do mild craft beers. Like, if they add fruit flavor, it'll be subtle. They try to make everything mild. Even their strong beers are, are mild, you know. Uh, and, and Shiner doesn't really get into strong beers. You know, they usually hovering around 4.9. If they get extreme, it'd be like 5.3. <laughs> a beta sometimes would get up to the 10% alcohol level, but that's not common. Um, a, beta, a beta did do some really deep, you know, hardcore barrel age, oyster stout beers and all that. But um, I don't know if those were really profitable for them. Because they've just gone back to the regular um, different variety grocery store beers, which seems to really be working for them. All the big bombers of the specialty stuff have, have gone away. They will offer some rarities at their brewery in Abita Springs, Louisiana. So you might get one, like an ale that tastes like an old-fashioned and stuff like that. But it's really only for the uh, on-premise. You can hear people doing... Yard work, weed whacker over there. They're building a fence. So you got the compressor motor running for the nail gun. Um, medium bodied, a little slightly slick mouthfeel for maybe the fruit. Crisp finish, a sweetness level. Two point 
two and a half out of five sugar cubes at the most. Bitterness, yeah, two out of five hop cones. So it, everything's mild about it. Uh, I wouldn't really want to buy a six pack Tate of Truth because it's not my kind of thing, but I'm glad I bought the, the single. Uh, but I think these sell pretty well in Louisiana. Uh, a lot of people like Shinerbach. Yeah, I gotta get some Shinerbach. I find that beer is just bland, but um, they did sell Shiner Premium beer. Their regular lager. Uh, I don't see that anymore. Uh, it was called Shiner Blonde for years. I don't see a date, guys. I know there's a date on this bottle, but they'll print it in black ink. <laughs> black on black ink on dark brown. I know it's fresh because it just came out onto the shelves here. So just not, by even not looking at the date, I know it's fresh. But I can't rant about them putting the date because I know it's somewhere on here, and later on I'll find it when it won't matter. But um, that's it. I mean, their beers are just mild and pleasant. A lot of craft beer companies, that's that's their game plan, and it works for them. Um, we used to get harpoon beers down here, shipyard. They were the same way. I mean, the shipyard did did and does have that Pugsley's 4X IPA, which is more intense. Sure miss it. Harpoon with their standard IPA was very nice. Really hate to see that leave. Uh, of course, Victory was the same way, more or less. Um, man, I missed that original Shipyard Monkey Fist, too. Now I'm reminiscing that good old Monkey Fist. That was a nice one. Uh, we used to get Full Sail around here. Red Hook. Those were all in that same vein. Yes. Left hand brewing is that way, yes. It's, I guess there may be as many that way than the more extreme craft beer companies, which I don't know if those guys making any money or not. I guess they are. Uh, Goose Island's kind of in between. They, they got the more heavy hitters like the Bourbon County Stout, I mean 14.3%. That's pr pretty extreme, right? Um, and their ordinary beers just faded away from here. Honker's Ale. Hardly ever see that 312 Wheat Ale. We still get the IPA, the regular English style green label. You know, the very tame <laughs> beer. Oh, well, we could go on and on with all that. But, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's nice. Uh, score. I like it. It's kind of like most shine beers. I like them. I don't adore them. Uh, their scores are not always the same. So if you go and look up all the shiner beers I've done, and then you start telling me, well, this time you scored it that way, and then this time you scored, I'll be like, I oh, know, okay, but that was at the time. And I'm trying to be fair as as it is happening in in the real time at uh, you know at the time of the recording. So I'm going to go with 86 out of 100 this time. I think this is a good beer. It's a beat. Don't remember what I gave in 2015. Don't think it's changed. They just brought back an old recipe, which is not difficult to do. So 8.6 out of 10. A good beer. That's all you can say about it. It's a good beer. A lot of good beers on the shelf. So, and that's it. And I'm going to end this review by saying y'all go to Shiner, Texas and tour the Spetzel Brewery. Now their brewery tour is an A+. I mean, it is great. And it's been almost five years since I went. We went there, and uh, at the time it was five dollars to tour, and it was a pretty long tour. And then it was very interesting, though it didn't get boring. And then they just start giving you so many drinks. Got to watch out for that. They're like, "Oh no, try another one, try another one." And uh, <laughs> it was really exciting. And a lot of tourists go there. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That's it. Thank you.